All right, so, uh, so we want to factor this expression here. This is uh, x to the fourth plus 1 over x to the fourth. They want us to factor this. Now, going through your factoring techniques, you kind of want to look through, like, the first thing you look for is a GCF. I don't have a GCF here. Then you move on to, do I see, like, a difference of squares, to which you say no. Uh, looking at sum or difference of cubes, again, that's a no. Um, factor by grouping. I'm not really seeing that. To do factor by grouping, typically you need um, multiple expressions, right? To get factor by grouping, you would need four, six, eight, ten, et cetera, types of terms. So uh, what are we left with here? Um, we're left with the idea of making the observation that you can see x to the power of 4 is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. So when you have two terms that are perfect squares... Maybe this entire thing is a perfect square. I can write this as follows. Now, if I do put this down here, you'll see you square the first term. You're going to get that x to the fourth. You square the last term, you're going to get the 1 over x to the fourth. However, um, when I expand this out, you also have to do the first term times the second term times 2. And that's going to generate, inside of here, that will generate a 2. So we have to fix that. And to fix that, we have to now subtract 2. So this is actually an incomplete square in this expression. So again, expanding this out just to make sure you guys are with me, uh, you're gonna it's going to generate x to the 4th plus 2 plus 1 over x to the 4th. Clearly, this uh, is not equal to this. However, if I subtract 2 from here, that will effectively cancel off my 2 that you see that is expanded out, and we have equality. So therefore, I'm going to subtract 2 here. I'm then going to rewrite this as the square root of 2 quantity squared. And now we have a difference of squares we can apply. So this will be x squared plus 1 over x squared minus the root of 2 times x squared plus uh, 1 over x squared plus the square root. And from here, we would leave it and be fully factored here. All right, for this example here, you can see, again, this has a quadratic look to it. You have your exponent of 4, and then the next exponent exactly half of that, so in this case 2, and then your constant term. So it looks like a quadratic here, and I can make the observation that uh, these two are perfect squares. So the question becomes, is this, is this equal uh, to the following? Now, if I expand out the first, you get your 4a four, four to the fourth. Square the 1, you get 1. But when I do first times second times 2, I'm going to generate here a 4a squared. And I do not want a 4a squared in this case. I want a minus 13a squared. So to go from 4 to minus 13, we're going to have to subtract 17 this time. So this is an incomplete square. And to make this um, equation true, we're going to have to subtract 17a squared. And again, you can force yourself a difference of squares by replacing the... Uh, 17a squared with root 17a quantity squared. And now the difference of squares kicks in, gives us 2a squared plus 1 minus the square root of 17a. And then 2a squared plus 1 plus the root of 17a. Rearranging this, we have the following. And now we have our expression of factors as the product of two quadratics here. Now, if you do a quick discriminant check on these two, you get the following. And uh, calculating your discriminant here, you get a 9 for both of these. Um, so we end up getting here that um, it has real roots. The roots are irrational. Now, normally, uh, it was discussed if your discriminant is a perfect square, then your roots are rational roots. That is true as long as your coefficients themselves, in particular, the b value is also a rational value. At any rate, this degree 4 polynomial will break up as follows. Um, and it can break up more, uh, except for the roots are irrational, so typically we would leave it at this point, and then if you were looking to find the roots, you'd go to your quadratic equation. Let's revisit this question, and what would happen here, because notice with this question here, if I put a minus sign here, I would still get the 4a squared, and I would still get the positive 1. But uh, the inside value would be different, in which case this would be different as well. So let's redo this question with a minus sign here. Uh, and see what we get. So putting a minus sign here, you'll see we'll end up generating a minus 4a squared this time. And then to go from minus 4 to minus 13, uh, we only have to subtract uh, 9a squared this time. And this ends up being 2a squared minus 1 squared minus 3a quantity squared. 
and this will factor into 2a squared minus 1 minus 3a times 2a squared minus 1 plus uh, 3a. Rearranging this, we get 2a squared minus 3a minus 1 and 2a squared plus 3a minus 1. So now you'll see here that um, we have a totally different um, set of answers as we had in the first one. So just, let's compare these two answers that we had. So if you examine these two problems, you notice that in the first one, uh, we had put a plus sign here requiring us to subtract off a minus 17a squared, which generated the following two quadratics. And in the second example, I had changed that plus to a minus. You still have equality. This time we had to subtract a minus 9a squared and generated another two uh, quadratics here. This solution is correct. This solution is correct. Uh, these two are equal. To make this observation here, take a look at what the roots are. We know that the roots of um, this quadratic will be as follows. And you'll notice here, we write out these root systems. We have the following. And you'll notice here, I went ahead and used my quadratic equation, and I got the following four roots. I kind of displayed them all out here. And likewise, for this solution here, I went ahead and calculated my discriminant. This time I got 17s, uh, both 17, and then I calculated my quadratic equation and wrote out the roots. you notice all the roots are exactly the same. Uh, if you interchange the negative 3 and 17, uh, you will get this root. If you flip the negative 17 and minus 3, we will get this root. And if you interchange the other two in a similar fashion, we get the other roots. So the only thing that's happening here is, you know, this quadratic here, which contains the following two roots, um, is going to be made up of a root from this polynomial and a root from this polynomial together multiplied. We're creating this quadratic, and likewise, the roots from this polynomial, uh, which were these two right here, are going to grab one root from here and one root from here and multiply those two together to create a new polynomial. All right, so I thought I'd make that uh, indication here. If you're looking for the roots, it doesn't matter which way you do it. If you're looking to solve the quadratic and factor it, um, not in terms of its root system, just stopping um, before you get your irrational roots, either solution is fine. Typically, you want to choose the solution that gives you a perfect square rather than the root 17. Um, but other than that, uh, these solutions are equivalent.